Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the WrestlePlug podcast. I'm Aaron Nix, as you know, but nobody cares about that. They care about the incredible superhuman athlete that is in the window next to me. You may have recognized her beautiful face. She is, of course, Persephone Vice, one of the most destructive and beautiful forces on the Canadian independent wrestling scene. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I know we've been trying to connect for a little bit, but it'll always be scheduled, you know? Yeah, so I'm finally, play. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for the invite. I appreciate it. It's a real pleasure to have you. Um, I don't know how much you'll know of our podcast, but women's wrestling is very important to us. We take it very seriously and we champion it a great deal as we have over the past four years. Now, obviously, I know who you are. I've seen what you can do. And with the advancements of technology in YouTube, it's so easy now to be able to check out what people can do. However, for the... Uh, part of our audience who may not necessarily understand or may not necessarily have had an introduction to your work who is Persephone Vice and what does she bring to the table as far as independent wrestling goes oh that's a loaded question I love questions like this so this is awesome um so I mean it was really hard like I'm gonna go I'm gonna kind of draw this out here um it was always hard to find with, with what my place was in the independent scene. Um, I mean, being one of the bigger girls in the Ontario and Canada scene, I mean, I'm six foot two, 220 pounds. So um, there was always going to be uh, like a way for me to stand out from the other girls um, physically. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's a lot of women that I've wrestled who's athletic um talent is far exceeds anything that I could ever do and I think that's incredible um as far as my place in this business or in at least Ontario um you know it was it was really hard to find my footing especially when I first started out um because if you if you went down the the rabbit hole I guess you could say I actually started out as a manager before I transitioned transition excuse me into being um a full-time wrestler so there were a lot of bumps in the road for me to get to that point and I had to overcome a lot of challenges a lot of adversities a lot of naysayers and it was only in the last um few years I can honestly say that I really felt that I broke down some barriers um not just um like personally uh, but I felt that I was making some waves um, in other provinces in Canada and really becoming um, more known. And uh, and so here we are today. And then, of course, you know, COVID hit. So here we are. And everything just basically halted. Like, right, like literally right before COVID, I had um, my last two wrestling shows. Uh, I became a champion um, for both both um promotions and then everything just stopped so the momentum that I had been creating working separate programs with these promotions like literally just stopped so that's kind of the crossroads where we are at now how was the transition from being able to work regular weekends being able to train regularly to all of a sudden just having it completely blocked from you um, obviously I can speak to it to a certain extent but you can even more so how has that been uh, in terms of training have you found it much more difficult to continue training and also how has the mental health aspect of it hit because a lot of wrestlers I've spoken to recently have said that actually this has been an opportunity to uh, fall in love with other hobbies or uh, some of them have actually drifted away from the business particularly in Britain where we've got such a massive scene um, how has it been for you? So I, I miss wrestling every day. I, um, because like the momentum was building, I wanted to continue with that. And so to, to be told you can't do anything after, um, you know, working so hard. And like, again, I'm going to, I'm going to divulge in here. Um, I've come back from several shoulder injuries. Um, I had two back-to-back -back shoulder operations. So that put my wrestling career on hold. 
And then once I came back, you know, things started to progress again. I was going on tours with CWE Canada. Um, and we were, again, I was supposed to go on two tours with them uh, the year that COVID became a thing. And um, that stopped. Like it, you, like, and it was so, it was such a bummer because touring for me is, you know, getting to see an extension of my family, um, getting to go to different cities that I never would ever travel before, right? Mm. Um, and I, I actually, I was supposed to be working with uh, Lori. I'm sure you've heard of Lori, right? Yeah, I was yeah, supposed to be, wrong, yeah, I was supposed to be working with her and to not get to meet such an incredible individual who has such incredible talent and to work with that. Oh, I'm so bummed. I'm so, so bummed. Um, to not be able to train, like our gyms are closed here. All of the wrestling schools that are in my area are closed. Um, I, and because of my job, I pretty much isolate myself anyway. Um, and we'll keep it what my job is to that. <laughs> um, but um, I mean, mentally, some days I just, I lose it. Um, you know, I could be in a puddle of tears and all I want to do is just get my frustrations out, but I, I don't have an outlet. Um, even with like the modeling that I do to, to kind of, um, obviously that's also, um, a, there's a financial standpoint of modeling as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's even stopped because we you things are closed things are stopped like it's a stay-at-home order right now so everything that I have done before is just like halted um I try like I mean what hobbies could I could I do I, I work a lot of the time so my favorite things to relax or to go to the gym I get ready for like to do photo shoots um, I, this is why I love doing podcasts. Like this is this is super fun for me. Um, I love doing radio stuff or um, commentary. Anything like that is something that I enjoy. Um, so at least I can do podcasts, right? That's a good thing. That's a plus. <laughs> um, I'm I'm itching to get back to the ring. I'm itching to run the ropes. Um, I'm sure that first bump is going to feel pretty shitty oh can we swear on here i'm sorry oh yeah absolutely you swear oh, oh i'm so i'm sorry okay great <laughs> so yeah that first bump's gonna feel like shit and i'm pretty sure every other wrestler that you ask who hasn't been able to wrestle and during this time frame is going to say the same thing uh, maybe i'm generalizing so i apologize to all the wrestlers who are uh, watching this and don't believe me but anyway <laughs> um so that's kind of where i'm at mentally physically um Luckily, I can, I know I have a stationary bike here in my house, so I get a little bit of cardio in, but that, that feeling that you get to go to the gym, I, I don't have that, and that totally sucks. Like, ah, anyway, that's that. <laughs> yeah, no, they've only just opened the gyms here after months and months. I, but... I heard, I heard, you lucky guys, you. Oh, I'm so envious. That's, that's where I'm living at the moment, because we're having a staggered kind of release, so you can only really go to the gym. It's not like you can go charging into pubs and clubs and things like that now, so I just live in the gym at the moment and trying to make something of myself. Um, the uh, Actually, you mentioned your shoulder injury. I've had the opportunity to sit down. There's some wonderful uh, material actually on YouTube for you specifically. Um, you know, women in combat sports is something yes, like Yes, versus the series, the documentary. Yes. I yes, love yes. That. It's stunningly shot. Um, as somebody who's a videographer, I really appreciated and respected that craft as well. But I was really fascinated by your emotional journey. Obviously, you'd had, I believe, two to two and a half years out with your shoulder, um, not knowing whether, you know, you'd have the opportunity to continue your passion again. And obviously, I'm sure people will want to hear the cookie cutter stuff, although with all due respect, it's also available on the internet. You know, we we like to keep it loose here, but we also like to ask you questions that are a little bit different. You know, I want to delve in and find out certain things that maybe other people may not have had the opportunity to ask. Um, two and a half years is a long time away from a sport that is so viciously athletic and powerful and hard hitting and, you know, everything that we expect it to be smash mouth. Um, 
obviously seeing that first match back and that release and knowing that you're able to continue your dream must have been incredible and people can see that in your expressions and everything that comes with that um how has it been day to day since then managing such a high impact injury um it's tough every single day is a challenge um i have to wear uh, specifically while I'm at work, I have to do, I have to wear a shoulder brace, um, just because I, I work so much, I'm running around and, uh, my body just needs a little bit of help. So I wear that, uh, when I wrestle, I also wear, um, my shoulder brace to give it a little extra support and almost to have a little bit of protection, um, during the match, um, but it's life-changing. I have nerve damage on this side. Um, my grip strength on my right hand is very weak. Um, I lose sensation in my pinky and my ring finger. Um, it's very hard. Um, functionally, like it works, but there are days where I'm just so sore and so tired where the whole arm just feels I guess you can say like the word dead, but I mean, obviously it's not but it's like that very heavy okay my best way to describe it is you know that moment when your foot has fallen asleep and then you go to stand up and your your whole leg you're just like oh my god you're gonna about you're about to bail because you can't put pressure on your leg that is the pain that I feel wow and um, yeah so um I do go in for treatments, but again, now with the, the situation uh, that we're in, uh, trying to get appointments and uh, it's become more challenging because uh, certain, um, uh, certain therapies uh, I'm, are unavailable to me at this point, which totally sucks. So to add that into the mix, uh, my shoulder has, um, I was doing okay for a little while but then all of this happened and then lockdowns happened and then my treatment halted. So now I regressed a significant amount. So, and then with not being able to go to the gym to try to do the therapy treatments um, at the gym, I try to do them at home, but I don't have the proper um, tools to do so. And even if I try to go buy them right now, like things are just astronomically priced uh, and I, or they're just not available. Mm. So um, things are tough on, in that sense. Um, the pain never goes away. It's always there. Um, and that's, and that's bothersome. And it's a daily struggle. And I've, I've, I've told myself that um, the last match uh, like my comeback match, if that was my last one, that I, I had to be at peace with it. And um, I'm very grateful that I've been able to, uh, oh, sorry, oh, my cat, I apologize. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> you little shit. Um, no I'm animals. so sorry. <laughs> um, that I would have to make peace with this being my my last time. But I'm just grateful that I was able to, to push through. I mean, every match is a challenge. Like, I'm not, mm. uh, not going to lie about that. Every match is very difficult for me, uh, pain-wise, especially if it's like if I'm on a, on a on tour basis where we're wrestling every day. Mm. Um, I, my body is very sore, especially my shoulder. But I do the best that I can. And I, I work with amazing people who understand that I do have a shoulder injury and we get through it together um and that's I can't, couldn't ask for anything more than that I could not ask for anything more than that and the, as I said the fact that I still get to do this um it's just I'm I'm living out a dream basically I'm living out what I wanted to do and I'm not ready to quit yet I'm not ready has it tempered your expectations of what you'd like to achieve a little bit have you kind of made peace with the fact that because um obviously you know we've all got great dreams of what we'd like to do as workers where we'd like to work maybe work abroad maybe have an opportunity to work for a bigger company um have you kind of settled into a mentality now of 
I'm just grateful that I'm able to do what I do and achieve that. Or is there still that aspect of if I can work hard enough at the shoulder, I can maybe achieve something even greater than what I'm already doing, which is already quite amazing, to be fair. Oh, thank you. Um, I really appreciate that compliment. It means a lot. Um, I still have dreams of wrestling in the UK. I still have dreams of wrestling in Japan. Like that would be bananas for me. Um, and I've talked to a lot of men and women who have worked in Japan. And because of my size and because of my look, they think that I would be pretty over there. Um, I just need the opportunity to go and experience that. Um, those are still pretty big goals of mine. And I would love to um, have the opportunity to um, achieve those. Um, working for bigger companies, that, that'll always, I think that'll always be in um, every wrestler's mind to have those opportunities. Um, I've been able to uh, have a couple tryouts with WWE and I, the fact that I even had those tryouts, I mean, I accomplished something in itself at that point because there are some workers who don't even get that opportunity. Um, and the fact that those opportunities uh, came my way, um, I feel extraordinarily blessed and I am so grateful to have had those experiences. And if any other opportunity were to come up with, let's say AEW um, or Impact, I would, I would jump at it. I would love it 100%. Regardless of the shoulder, I would just do it just to, to say that I, I had the opportunity and uh, I'd give it everything that I have. Um, it's quite rare, actually. I've only ever had uh, two people on there, a tag team, actually, the Arrows of Hungary, who had had the opportunity at a WWE trial themselves via WXW's Academy. Um, uh, what was what was that process like, and how tough is it at a WWE tryout? You can obviously speak to that and that experience. So this was, like, um, I want to be clear, I did not go to the Performance Center. Some tryouts happen at the Performance Center. These were, um, I was hired as an extra to be a rosebud. And um, included in that would be to have a tryout there. Mm -hmm. um, so basically the group, however many individuals were there, uh, would put together a match, perform it, and that would be it. Um, it was very fast paced. Um, actually, there was one um, there was one tryout that I had where we were there for extra work, and we actually didn't get a we didn't get the tryout. Um, the trainers weren't there. I don't really know the entire backstory, but the tryout never happened. Like we didn't we didn't get to to uh, to wrestle uh, pre show. Mm. Um, but as I was saying, it was it's very it was very fast paced. You only had about uh, about five minutes to get your shit done in the ring and get out. Um, I was able to get a lot of feedback, which was awesome. Um, and the fact that uh, I got to go back um, a couple more times for other tryouts and meet uh, and chat with the other individuals that I had met at other at the tryouts prior. Um, we would be able to chat and they would uh, talk to me about my try, like my match, how they liked it, what I could improve on. So it was always a learning, um, uh, like a, the process of learning. So I, I, I just thoroughly enjoyed it, um, even if my time there was very brief. The, um, the process of having to, like, obviously, you must have an astonishing amount of mental strength. I... I don't really speak about it much, but I actually have a lot of nerve damage myself. So I was just kind of like, oh, like it, it really sort of struck a chord with me, pun intended, I guess. Um, the, you know, like I say, mental strength is obviously crucial to wrestling as a whole. Do you feel like in some ways it's made you even tougher than the average wrestler? Because even just getting into training and taking the bumps and doing the drills and running the ropes is a real taxing opportunity. And it's a taxing position for us to be in. Um, you must feel in some ways incredibly powerful and rightfully so something that you've earned. That's like, I don't want to, 
how do I say this properly? I, I, I've been through some shit and I'm still dealing with it. Um, do I consider myself like, like tough? Sure. Um, would I ever say that I'm tougher than anybody else? No. Uh, we all have our journeys, especially um, when it comes to our injuries, because all, at any wrestler who has been through surgery or has had multiple injuries of the same joint will, will have some experiencing, will experience some form of discomfort and pain all the time and whether it's wrestling that aggravates it whether it's working out that aggravates it or just their their daily their their daily lives um we all because we love what we do we love wrestling we love everything about it it's almost um something else kicks in maybe it's the fight or flight thing i don't know um sorry <clears throat> something kicks in and you just go forward um, when I, uh, like when I wrestle, everything that I feel goes away. There's no pain. Um, I just go, I just go out and I work and it's, it's honestly, I'm motivated by the crowd and my adrenaline gets going and anything that I feel just, it just stops. And I live in those moments. I cherish those moments. <laughs> so, um, and then, you know, once the adrenaline dies down, I'm, you know, I'm just riddled with pain and I have to throw in an ice pack. And I mean, that's just my life. And it's something that I accept. Um, you know, when there's, uh, you, you'll see a lot of other wrestlers wear like knee braces or sleeves or elbows or wrists, or they tape everything up. It, it's the same, it's the same situation. Every person um, who has ever been injured, uh, if this is what they want to do, they just, they just do it. And uh, we don't let our, our bodies uh, control what we want to do. And that's what I, I made a promise to myself that I would never allow, if I'm going to quit wrestling, hmm. I want to make that decision. I will not allow my body to make that decision for me. It takes a lot of strength. Um, shifting gears, Canadian, obviously Canadian scene, which is awesome. No, you guys have a pawn shop. We actually have a co-host who comes on every now and then, Kyle. He's uh, he's from Ontario as well, actually, uh, which is lovely. Um, there's such a, a great demeanor about Canada. But what people don't realize is the independent scene is quite strong. And the quality of talent that Canada produces is astonishing like people look at the united kingdom where i'm based and they believe that there is uh, an, an endless fountain of it and i suppose we do have it ingrained in our society all the way back to world of sport and well before that as well but canada's scene has been providing for a very very long time and yet the actual independent scene itself still doesn't really have the eyeballs or the traction of other major markets like Britain, like Japan, uh, like, you know, America. Um, when Josh Alexander was on the podcast, he spoke very eloquently about the difficulties and the issues that come with actually just being afforded the opportunity to wrestle in the United States. Cause it isn't as simple as, Oh, I'll just get in my car and drive over the border. Like we do to Scotland or something. They have very strict, um, parameters for you to travel visas, work permits, things of that nature. Yeah. As a Canadian wrestler, and obviously somebody who has such an amazing look and a unique identity, there, let's be fair, there aren't too many women who can claim to have the power and the striking look that you do. Um, I would imagine you would have got at least some interest from America, if not quite a bit. You certainly would if you're on my radar. Um, how is the... How is it, the nature of travel and moving between? Have you had the opportunity to wrestle in the United States? And what was that opportunity like? And obviously, what was the experience like? I have had opportunities to wrestle in the US. I have wrestled in Indiana. I've wrestled in Ohio. Um, I've wrestled, oh gosh, I you threw me, you threw me a curveball here and I'm brain dead. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Um, <laughs> but yes, um, I have had opportunities to wrestle in the U.S. And it's a very, 
it's a very different scene to wrestle in the U.S. Um, and um, I definitely miss having the opportunities. And and uh, and John, I know Josh. I've known Josh since like the beginning of his career. Um, we actually trained at the same facility, so I've known him for a while. Um, and he's absolutely right when he says um, the dynamic between um, wrestling and the ind independent scene here in Canada, um, more specifically Ontario. And it, it, it's very different um, wrestling in Ontario versus let's say wrestling in Alberta, or wrestling in British Columbia, or even wrestling in, in uh, Manitoba. I find that when you're wrestling interprovincially, um, certain provinces just eat it up more. And maybe because, I mean, Ontario is such a huge province. Um, and I mean, where I am in Ontario, where I guess I think I'm Eastern Ontario, I don't know, I'm terrible at geography, so don't quote me on that. Um, you can do like a little insert here. This is actually it's Western Ontario or something like that. I don't know <laughs> if we find out. I'm terrible. I'm so sorry. Um, but like out my way, um, at one point there, uh, the, I mean, we do have, there are several uh, promotions on the Ontario side, but my, like where I live, we border the Quebec, uh, we border Quebec. So then there's some uh, promotions that work out there. So locally, there was quite a few promotions with the same people um, being booked. And not that that's a problem. I wanna make that very, very clear. Not that that is a problem. And every single um, show had a very different product that they were bringing to the table. Some of them were more uh, family-based. Some of them were more along the lines of maybe more like bordering the adult um, type of quality. Hmm. Um, and not that they weren't promoting family fun. Um, I feel like I'm shooting myself in the foot here. Um, but <laughs> I guess because there, there's a lot of times that wrestling does have that um, the negative connotation um, where f families just want to come and watch wrestling. They don't want, they don't want swearing. They don't want violence. They don't want blood. They don't want this. Um, and so some of, and some promotions, uh, did have that and that's okay. That's totally okay. I'm not shitting on anybody. Let's make that very clear. I am not shitting on anybody. Um, but I think because there's so, there was such a very different dynamic on, um, on each promotion, I mean, it's just hard to get booked anywhere, um, especially when you're in such a small part of Ontario. Like if I was in Toronto, Toronto has huge shows. And I've, and I've known a lot, I know a lot of people from Toronto um, and like how they sell out their shows. And like once they find, I mean, once you find what works for your promotion, people will just flock to you. And I mean, I uh, Greek Town Wrestling comes to mind like right away. Um, I never had the opportunity to work for them, uh, but I do know um, the person who owns uh, or, or the sole proprietor, I guess, of uh, Greek Town Wrestling, and um, like he's done well. Like that sh that promotion is has some of the best talent, has some of the best crowds, has the best programs, and I wish I could have been a part of that um and uh like it's it's just a very different dynamic depending on what where you are geographically and I think that can even be said in the UK because I mean again I'm generalizing here because I've never worked in the UK so please correct me if I'm wrong you will do it but I don't want <laughs> but I uh, but like I mean I think you understand what I'm saying that geographically mm. like they're like the UK is a huge country and you could do have a show in one part of the UK and then cross the border and have a very completely different experience. Am I right? Yeah, I think we have quite an advantage that we don't, we take it for granted a lot. Um, we don't have the restriction of movement across borders as much. Like for instance, yeah. I can just drive into Scotland and there's no border patrol. Nobody will check me or anything like that. We don't need passports to travel around. Um, flying to Ireland can be a little bit different because obviously you're hopping over a very, very small expanse of water to be fair. But yeah, um, it, it depends on identity. I think 
every wrestling company over here tries to afford everybody a little bit of something, but we're now starting to see, for instance, TNT in Liverpool is very deathmatch based, which, you know, no problem to me. I enjoy that stuff. Like, I'm a, I'm a very violent wrestler, so, you know, what can I say? But um, I like to think that I can adapt to whatever show I'm on and, you know, I can tone it down if needs be. But, yeah, no, you are correct in saying that. There is a United Kingdom. I think, to be fair, in North America, it's a lot more pronounced just because of the historical context. In Britain, very much for a long time, especially if you go back and watch World of Sport, it was all about the um interactions with the audience and the more circus-like carnival style of it that really afforded people an opportunity to enjoy it. like for instance holiday camps are still a huge thing over here you can do the camp circuits butlins and you know um very bad bad holiday parks which i wouldn't recommend you have a holiday at but great for wrestling at least and um yeah no it's it does have its place to be fair and there is a different identity wherever you go like scotland for instance has such a cool rugged identity which i love personally um somewhere i'd like to work a lot more so um as far as you specifically um you're obviously somebody I think it's fair to say that not every woman that gets in the business has the combination of beauty and power that you do. I liken you a little bit to uh, the Glamours and Beth Phoenix in that, you know, that unique identity of power, you know, size, strength. Not every woman is blessed with six foot two. Let's be fair. You can't teach that. You definitely can't. That's something that's, you know, God given or for whatever you would, um, you know, yeah. teach to believe in. <laughs> How was it when you first started? Was there immediately an earmark of, wow, this woman's a lot more powerful? How did other women perceive you as well when you had the opportunity? What people don't realize is when you train, you train with men and women. And ultimately, if you're not, then really you should be looking at a school that affords you the opportunity to do so. If they're separating you by gender, then you're not really going to do as well as you should. Or at least that's just my personal opinion. Um, how was it for you and also how did the other women perceive it were they terrified of you um i trained with you're right i also trained with uh men and women um more more men than women um when i would uh train with the guys it was i was usually like height wise stature wise we were about the same Hmm. um working with uh, and I, again, I'm not shitting on anybody. No. Um, it was, it, there were, I think there were multiple challenges. Um, as a bigger person, I can adapt to any situation. I mean, I've had to my entire life. Um, it's, it, I felt that sometimes um, I, I was getting yelled at by other women wrestlers um, or trainees, I should say, trainees. Um, you know kind of the excuse is well well i can't i can't grab her because she's too big like okay how dare you be so tall (laughs) i know um and i guess there was like uh sometimes there were like some frustration on their end because maybe Mm. they um you know they don't know like some people just don't know how to navigate around a bigger body and that's totally okay especially if they are on the shorter side i mean that's that's what it is. It happens. Um, so there was that kind of dynamic um, in training, um, but eventually, what you you just get through it. And once you, I mean, I mean, it, we're we're wrestlers. We're we're professionals. This is what we're training to do. So, of course, um, when you don't pick it up the first time, you just keep trying and you keep going. Um, I even in even when I was training, I I struggled uh, whether I was working with someone who was my height or shorter. Um, sometimes it was more of a mental game than anything. Which I mean, that's wrestling. It really there's a lot of mental toughness, as we were talking about uh, before. Um, so just pushing your own um, personal boundaries um, and breaking rules that um i don't even know what the word is right now but you're 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 breaking through what you Mm -hmm. think you couldn't do um and every person has to go through that regardless of their size regardless of who they're working um it is a mental game and whether it doesn't matter whether you're four foot five five foot five or six foot five everything is going to be different for every 
every different wrestler and how they how they train and how they work, right? Yeah. So there was that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, did you find that because of your size and your appearance, the, there was uh, any kind of, I don't know, do you feel like there's been a push for you to get involved in intergender wrestling a lot more because of your size and power? Because let's be honest, you can probably kick the shot out of most men as well. Um which is pretty fucking awesome. So I, I think that's cool. I think that's empowering, personally. And um, you're the kind of person I, that I, I would like to I, wrestle. I, oh, awesome. Well, hey, you know what? Maybe one day, right? Once all of this fucking shenanigans is over. Um, I have done some intergender stuff. I have also done intergender tag matches. And I think it's so fun. Like, it's so fun. You can totally play up the crowd where, you know, like, uh, oh, I can't hit a girl, or all this other stuff, and you know, there's some people will think that it's they they don't like intergender wrestling because of the fact that it's men and women, and there's a a history of violence type situation there. Um, but I love it. Um, I think one of the reasons why I love it so much is because, I mean, one of my favorite all time matches and. Um, is against my, my one of my best friends, Hellraiser Payne, um, or Payne, however you choose to to know him as. Um, we put uh, a hell of a match on together, and it was the very first time that I had ever wrestled someone who, like, like uh, size wise, was comparable to me. And even to this day, that match was years ago now. Even to this day, fans will come up and tell me how much they love that match. And like, ugh, I'm glad that they tell me that because that is one of my like favorite fucking matches of my entire career. Not only did I get to wrestle one of my best friends, like my best, best friend, um, everything went so well. The fans ate it up and it was just, everything just went so swimmingly well and I wish I had more of an opportunity to wrestle um even one-on-one uh I would love to wrestle uh, more male uh male wrestlers I think the dynamic is very different um and it just works for me I just love it so much more um I love I was supposed to work um Lori and we were supposed to have a couple intergender matches on the tour we were supposed to go on and I was looking forward to those two um, to learn from Lori and Robin. And, um, you know, unfortunately, those were those opportunities were taken away. But I do hope that eventually I'll be able to, to work with them somewhere down the line. Um, but, yeah, like intergender matches are probably some of my favorite, to be honest. Like 100%. They're the best. Yeah, Lori's, um, she was on recently, actually. Her podcast is dropping a uh, similar song to yours, actually. And um, yeah, she's uh, she was somebody I likened to Thunder Rosa, like our version of Thunder Rosa in a lot of ways. I say our version, she lives over here, but, you know, she's from Germany. Yeah. Really. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so it's, it's an open part. We love culture here, or at least I do. Not everyone is the same, unfortunately, but, you know, I'm mixed race. So ultimately, I'm going to appreciate it a lot more. Um, yeah. Just as a very brief side note, because I've had wrestlers, really good ones, NXT stars, uh, come on my podcast and say, I don't like intergender wrestling. I think that it promotes domestic abuse and things of that nature. Obviously, if you don't want to speak about it or if it is a trigger warning anyway, I apologize and we can move on. But as a woman, you are more than entitled, just like everyone else, because equality, duh, um, you're entitled to speak on that subject. And some women, uh, Charlie Evans, for instance, has said that I don't even like the term intergender because as far as I'm concerned, I could whip your ass whether you're a man or a woman. And the fact that, you know, a gender shouldn't come into it at all. What's your thoughts on people taking it? Like, it's one thing to not like something, but I feel like it's quite another to have an opinion particularly if you're not a wrestler because there are fans who i get attacking me all the time in my dm saying you're promoting domestic violence by you know showing intergender wrestling on your platform and things of that nature 
what are your thoughts on everything that whole melting pot is there anything you'd like to lend to that conversation maybe to sort of suggest to people and educate them more so on the idea of what intergender wrestling is for sure um let's let's excuse me let's break this down here so any type of sport let's say you know um whether it's soccer, football, baseball, karate, MMA, all of that stuff, wrestling, like professional wrestling, entertainment wrestling, whatever you want to label it as, um, there will always be men and women training together. Always. They will always have some kind of interaction. And when you do this, like as a professional wrestler, I, from day one, I was training with men from day one. So there is a level of professionalism from me and my training like partners if you want to say partners or my family my training family and i have to trust those people right you have to trust them and um because because we have trained together we've worked together we've practiced together we've worked out together when it's time to wrestle each other we are there to do a job. Um, and uh, I, I will always be for, doesn't matter, man, man or woman, I will wrestle you. I don't care. I don't care. Because that's what I'm trained to do. That's what my job is to do. If you are putting on a show and be like, hey, Vice, you're going to be wrestling so-and-so. Done. Thanks for the opportunity because that's what I'm there to do. I... I admit intergender wrestling or I see again, like I, I, it doesn't bother me. I, I love it either way. I'm just happy to be involved in the show. So man, woman, whatever you identify as or whomever you identify as bring it. I don't care. Let's do this. Yeah. It's um, I think it's very important that, you know, I don't want to speak on behalf of an entire gender and dare would I ever. Um, but I also believe that, this opinion on intergender wrestling seems to have been made without really consulting the fairer half of the demographic which of course is you know the women's side of things and also people who self-identify as gender fluid or whatever that may be yeah. um i just feel that we should be asking everybody not just the men because that's just ignorant also it's just you know speaking from my own personal experience from you know racial abuse and things of that nature i tend to find that most people are outraged about like islamophobia or things like that because i'm from a egyptian family um you know nobody actually bothers speaking to me about it it's like well ask the white guy over there it's like that's great what about us like you know so yeah, exactly. you know, that, that's a, another story for another time um and like as a woman wrestler like i know what i'm getting myself into when i when i signed up to train i knew that i'm getting into a business that is predominantly male hmm. and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that I mean, look at look at how far we have come, as on from like the women wrestlers pers uh, perspective. We've broken down a lot of walls. We've busted a lot of barriers. We still have lots to go. the The journey isn't over yet, mm. but I feel like with every, I'm going to say this again, intergender match, we get a little further. You know, it's it's one step closer, um, and I I think. I think there should be more of them. I, I, I think you're as it, it shouldn't matter. If I want to wrestle a guy, I'll wrestle a guy. Put me with him. I don't care. Let's do this. Because it'll just be as entertaining as if I was wrestling a woman. It doesn't matter. And it shouldn't. Yeah. And also, let's not forget that it's something that I've always said is that I'm yet to meet a women's wrestler or a wrestler who doesn't identify as a male who hasn't you know who has been forced into that scenario they've had a choice mm -hmm. they've made a conscientious decision to compete right. at this level and compete with other men it's not like they turn up and it's like you're going to wrestle men today whether you like it or not that's not how this process works and yeah. you know anyone worth their salt is always you know willing to input what they feel and what they're comfortable and what they're not comfortable doing in the wrestling world and that's kind of what leads me actually to my next question it's, it's a rather sensitive one so feel free to 
add whatever you would like to or not, again, um, as a trigger warning, speaking out was a big deal over here in particular um, in terms of the, I mean, I, you know, I can only speak to a set. Unfortunately, my experiences were outside of when I was much younger. So I can't really speak to the wrestling environment or I can speak very closely to the victims side of things, unfortunately. But um, I think it's very important that we as a unit, you know, put aside the fact of who's a man, who's a woman, who do we identify as and just create a safe space. Um, is it fair to say that Canada seems to have a much better idea of equality and respect in that regard? Because I'm not going to sit here and say to you, oh, you know, the Brit rest scene is amazing. It is, but it's got a lot of fucking problems and a lot of toxicity that needs to be removed. Mostly on a masculinity side, but there have been issues otherwise as well on different sides. There's always going to be problems wherever you go. Um, it's kind of a double barrel question. How is the Canadian side of things? Because from my perspective, my little knowledge that I do have and from the people I speak to over there, they seem to be a lot more understanding, a lot more better when it comes to things like safeguarding and principles of that nature. But also, um, as a powerful, strong, independent woman like yourself, um how do you feel about the process and do you feel like steps have already been taken to improve the environment and the safeguarding of individuals when they enter this sport um i would like to think that we have made leaps and bounds um especially protecting um the new people who are um who are starting to train and to um to work here um you're right. It is a sensitive subject, and I'm I do my best to to try to, try to speak uh, diplomatically. Um, there's still I I believe um, wherever you are, whether it's in Canada or the U.S. or abroad, regardless of where you are, there will always be things that need to change because there will always have some. I believe that there will always be some folks who will have old school mentality. Can you agree with me on that one? Oh, yes. Right. Um, and just like a, a conspiracy theorist, once someone um, is dead in their ways, especially old school mentality, it is very hard for them to change their mind. Um, and that's that's a tough pill for anybody to swallow, whether you are um, someone in this in this business who is transgendered, non-binary, um, gay, lesbian, bi, anybody under that LG, LGBTQ plus, um, did I say that wrong? Oh my God. Did I, say that? I think you got it right. The people understand. I think I got it right. Oh my God, I would feel so disrespectful if I got that wrong. No, I not at all. No, LGBTQ plus, yeah. No, no, you're correct. Is that what I said? I could have sworn I said I it so, wrong. Yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. Not okay. Disclaimer: If I offended anybody, I truly apologize. Um, so again, every person um, will have to break down a, a wall, and there are some people, regardless of where you are, um, will be more accepting of who you are, um, and will welcome you with a set of open arms. I mean, there's even, um, you know, I I remember with when I started. Um, again, I'm not comparing myself to anybody. You know, I got that, oh, there's another fan who turned wrestler. Well, isn't every wrestler a wrestling fan at some point in their life? Yeah, like, you I know, know that, me, I guess. It's very strange. You know? So um, I think every person, every person who loves wrestling and wants to be a wrestler, should be embraced with open arms, should feel welcome, should feel safe, and uh, on top of everything else, should be respected and have the same kind of training as anybody else would. Um, they should not be treated any differently. Um, they should not be segregated. Um, you know, I've always considered um, my wrestling family as a part of my family. Um, they are an extension of who I am. Um, and I, 
I always ensure that when I see new trainees, new faces, that I go and introduce myself. I talk to them, um, you know, because sometimes you can sense some some nervousness. Um, go ahead and just make them feel a little more comfortable. Um, you know, one of my, um, I think one of my favorite things to do uh, is to work someone who, like, let's say I'm the first one that has a wrestling match with them. And I think that's such a special moment, not just for me, but for them too, right? I, I love to be able to, to work with someone and give, like, I, I don't put myself over, like, I, I truly appreciate it when someone says that I'm a badass wrestler. And, you know, I'm, I, I still watch my matches and I'm like, I, I point out everything that I did wrong. And like, maybe we all do that. I don't know. But it's very hard for me to watch my matches back um but I always try to give um you know the best support I always try to be a, a, a good support system for anybody in this business um uh I I always try to talk to people and you know you, you have a sense of things um yeah. I don't know I feel like I'm rambling now but um yeah. I feel like regardless of what walk of life you come from uh, that you should be treated with respect mm. and when you are entering a wrestling gym um, you are treated as part of the family you are not to be segregated you are uh, shall I say you are one of us you know we are a community and I wish I wish there were I wish there was more of a community because uh, there are some times where you feel like you there isn't one um, so I would, that's what I wish for, that we were more of a community and a family at times, and sometimes we're not. I hope, I hope that answers your question okay. <laughs> Beautifully eloquent, yes. Um, okay, good. <laughs> no, that's honestly, no, it's, <laughs> I bow to your far greater wisdom than mine, to be fair. I've been floating around the business for the better part of about five years now but yeah no I, even I can't lend myself to a conversation as well as that so thank you for covering that so eloquently um we have a t well we don't have a time limit but at the same time I don't want to just take up all of your time so I'm happy to offer you a part two a part three I know you said that you enjoy doing podcasts so if you'd like to be a more regular person on here I'm more than happy to have you back yes. uh, regularly yes. but yes. I was look I'm pointing at you right now yes <laughs> 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 it's coming out it's there fair enough i um will build to that rivalry slowly but surely um one thing that i always offer people an opportunity to do on this podcast because i don't feel like enough podcast do it, is an opportunity for you to speak about something you'd like to talk about something that maybe you're passionate about or maybe just to kind of wax lyrical about how excited you are to get back into wrestling um is there anything in particular you'd like to discuss now that because I believe this podcast to be the wrestler's platform. This is my platform. I could give two shits what people think about me. And it's not about me. We're talking about you. Um, it's important that you get an opportunity to expand your brand. Is there anything you'd like to share? There is. Um, so as some wrestling fans might know, um, I was on a the documentary versus the series. Uh, we recently were able to get the entire documentary um, posted on YouTube. So please check that out. If you're, I'm not sure if you're able to add links or any. Yeah, there'll be in the descriptions below. Fantastic. If we could include that, that would be fantastic. Even if it's just a link so they could see uh, have access to everything. Um, also, um, uh, some of my my past. Uh, modeling works are now getting published which is a huge opportunity so uh keep a lookout on my instagram uh where you can purchase the magazine if you choose to um i will always try to have um, a small surplus on the side that if anybody is interested in purchasing for me i'll obviously autograph it and ship it out to you uh so check out my ig i'm sure you'll link that below too um, so those were the plan like that that's what I've got going I've got a bunch more photo shoots in the works unfortunately because of COVID right now um, all of my photo shoots have been put on hold but please stay tuned I'm really excited for it um, and of course 
any future podcast. You know? <laughs> yeah. The, um... so that's, basically, that's basically all I have right now. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. As far as our merch, uh, we'll provide links in the description, social media wise. They will also be available. Uh, this podcast will be across every platform, audio and video. So make sure you check out the descriptions of the podcast, wherever you've got it. And you will be able to contact the absolutely stunning individual that is Persephone Vice. Now, before you go, uh, I don't know if you've seen any of our other podcasts, but we like a bit of word association here for a bit of a laugh. So I ask our fans and I also chip in a few myself just in case they're being a bit silly because I have to vet the problem say sometimes especially when you've got good looking women on they try and take liberties and i think yes just let <laughs> men yeah um, you know how it is i'm sure you've had to deal with that yep. so i have a list of wrestlers oh, yeah. and individuals here um i i always say one word but at the same time i'm too nice and if you want to kind of talk about them more because i understand like you know for instance there's a name on here that we mentioned earlier who's awesome so you know if you want to learn more than one word i understand so i'll quickly read out a few of these names and feel free to tag a word that best describes them to them or if you can't think of one you're welcome to offer a small novella or soliloquy at your haste um soliloquy <laughs> Sorry. I love that. I am an English teacher. I, I apologize for sounding like a snob. Um, <laughs> no, I love it. Are you serious? Oh, I, I haven't heard that word in forever. I'm kind of obsessed with language and yeah, I, I took English as a major and I, I don't know. I just, I went to university and studied writing. I don't know. I'm just a massive English nerd. As simple as that, really. Um, so I yeah. It. I try my best. It's it's helped out with the podcast. So I can't complain. Right, let's start with something nice and easy. Josh Alexander. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I've got such a crush on him. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, I even told him. We, in fact, we had I our mean, interview. I love his tattoos. I yeah. love his tattoos. Yeah, I'm a big fan of tattoos myself, as you can see. So I was just like, awesome. I'm but, um, I'm covered, but I'm I mean I'm covered in tattoos, but I'm covered unfortunately yeah no i understand i understand professional <laughs> yeah you're a lot more professional than i am to be fair um <laughs> right yeah no fair enough also josh alexander i did interview him on valentine's day so just saying um <laughs> to the fact that he took time out of his he's got a wife and kids but he was like yeah i'll talk to you on valentine's day i was like okay cool um <laughs> guess i must be more popular than i realized bret hart legend He's my favorite wrestler of all time. So I think I think he was just thrown in because it's kind of the done thing in Canada. But is he really it's something that I don't get a chance to ask enough, actually, as a quick tangent. Is he really considered like royalty in Canada? Like is he that kind of person where you know, like everywhere you go, everyone talks about Bret Hart, or is it more of a Calgary Alberta kind of thing? I think it's it's nationwide, one hundred percent. That's awesome to know. Yeah, he was, well, I mean, I like to think I'm a good person. And a lot of that is actually down to him because even though I had a broken home, I used to watch him every single week and I wanted to be just like him. So I always applied his morals and ethics to everything I did. So, yeah, I, I love You're Brett. actually forgetting one of my very important, my very, very favorite Canadian. Very favorite Canadian. He's actually my favorite wrestler ever, ever, ever. Who's ever, that, Brett Hart? No, no, sorry. It's not. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, I'll hit the list. There are a few famous Canadians here, so we'll see how it goes. Um, Chris, okay. Chris Jericho. Entertaining. Kenny Omega. I don't know how I feel about him. Some some Wait. of our fans have very, um, shall we say, contentious opinions of Kenny Omega. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I'm not a huge fan of people wrestling blow-up dolls. And <laughs> that's just my cup of tea, personally. I did say Pass. <laughs> I like the fact that it's going to be like a small section of the wrestling audience that are going to watch this and be like, how dare you don't like blow up dolls? I'm offended. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> be offended, I guess. Um, the Young Bucks. Oh, 
super talented. I know that's two words, but they <laughs> so talented. Oh my gosh. No, that's fair enough. Ethan Page. Oh, he's also another guy that I trained with and he's fierce. Yeah, he comes across as really intense, but also a really nice guy at the same time. Like he's got a star. I, I, something I really admire about him because I've got that kind of similar passion, that creative passion, always coming up with new ideas and different things. And I love that your cat is yeah. adorable. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm so glad my dog can't see right now because he's freak. <laughs> like what? <laughs> um, let's see. I've got a list of amazing. Let's go with Beth Phoenix. Trailblazer. Molly Holly. <laughs> that was amazingly timed. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Um, genuine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm struggling to think of anyone who is as classy and kind as that woman. That's, yeah, she's amazing. Um, some of these have been thrown in to be smart, I think. Um, Rick Martell. <laughs> um, Blame our audience, not me. What's that? Blame our audience, Blame not your... me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I'm terrible. This is an interesting <laughs> one. Uh, Jacques Rougeau. Uh, a Montreal, uh, I believe it's a Montreal, he's from Montreal or Quebec. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, um, so he's in his own icon, um, out on the, on the Quebec side. Very succinct. Uh, Kevin Owens. Oh, sorry, Kevin. <laughs> <clears throat> Big fan of Kevin Owens. Yeah, he is, I guess. Um, again, like, Kevin Owens, he's, I know that you're only supposed to give one word, um, no, but he, I never had a chance to meet him or work with him. I know plenty of my friends who have had the opportunity. Um, he is just so fun to watch. I love his promos. Um, I know I've already said entertaining, but I am, I am truly entertained by this, by this individual. He's just fan freaking tastic. Yeah, I I personally have gone on record many times that I believe Kevin Owens to be the most underappreciated talent in the world. I think he's fucking amazing. Um, and also somebody who, with myself, like I really struggle with body confidence and seeing somebody who is, I don't think he's, you know, fat or anything like that, but he's not your archetypal Slim Jim six pack guy. And I really admire that. So, and he can mm-hmm. still work and outwork pretty much anybody. So I've got a lot of time for Kevin Owens. Um, Laurie. I love her. She's awesome, isn't she? Just powerful. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's so adorable. Yeah, no, I um, I just love powerful women. I think it's wonderful to see so many powerful women coming through as well, and it's lovely to know that you guys can hold down the scene as well as you have because. Yeah, it's been a tough and tumultuous time and obviously pandemic's hard enough, but then when you factor in everything personally that happened as well, it's important that we have pillars of strength like yourself to help carry it forward and to also look after the next generation of women's wrestling because um, that cat is wild. <laughs> Loving it. Don't be embarrassed. It's fun. We run a very good ship here when it comes to animals. They can do whatever they please because they're the better part of society as far as I'm concerned. Um couple more here and then we'll get out of dodge sounds good i'm disappointed by the lack of women on this list if i'm being honest you'd think that they'd be like oh lita's on here trailblazer as well she's fantastic uh trish dress oh i love her i love i've actually had uh the pleasure of meeting both of them and um I was able to speak to them about my own wrestling journey and uh, it was so cool. It, I've met Trish uh, several times and um, she'll be like, Julia, right? Or like, oh, I just gave my real name. Whoops. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, if you Google me, you'll find it out, figure it out what my name is. Um, but yeah, it's hilarious. Um, I'll never forget that. I, uh, I 
went to go see her. Um, it was at like a Comic Con situation, and um, I, I was next in line, and she's like, and she called me out, and it was a pretty decent moment. Gotta keep that one in here. <laughs> um, uh, as he's one of my favorite wrestlers, Edge. Oh gosh, uh, legendary! Oh man, he must be quite love him. Uh, love him. You must have quite a, you know, because obviously he's somebody who had a, you know, for lack of a better term, a career ending injury. I know you wouldn't obviously compare them, but at the same time, you know, he had to take so much time away from what he loved. So it must be really inspirational to you to see him come back better than ever. Oh, it's, it's always, again, I'm speaking from experience, um, anybody who can bounce, even like with Josh Alexander, he's had, um, I don't know if he's had, I mean, he's had some, some surgeries, I believe, on his neck. And uh, the fact that he was able to come back, I mean, man, it's just a fantastic feeling, like, especially because I know Josh. Um, you know, there's a sense of like, um, like a, a sense of real joy when you get to see um, <clears throat> your friends succeed. And I love that. Um, uh, I'm a very humble person um, and I will always be humble. Does that make me sound like I'm not humble by saying that I'm humble? No, I, I oh. believe it, to be honest. It comes across in no? your okay. Um, I, I'm always so excited for my friends who have the opportunities to um, live out their dreams. I know Ethan Page is on uh, uh, AEW. Um, Josh, I believe, has worked for Impact. I believe, and so has Ethan yeah, Page. Is, yeah. And uh, the fact that I, I, I mean, I remember these guys, and I, if I can say babies, they were they were babies when I was training with them, and to, to watch them grow into the wrestlers that they've become and the men that they've become, I'm, even though I don't speak to them all the time, um, I only actually recently, well, recently, like being a few years ago now. Um, saw Josh at um, at a wrestling event and to be able to connect with him again it was like it was like we just saw each other last week and we gave each other a hug and we talked about like you know he's covered in tattoos now and when I met him he wasn't he's got a family now Um, his life is so so vastly different and it was it's just so wonderful to see uh, people that I care about people that I I started out with succeed and do so well for themselves and I could not I could not be happier for for my friends honestly it's so cool yeah my apologies my dog was obviously very passionate about Josh Alexander as well um <clears throat> two more and I promise we'll get you out of Dodge <laughs> um yeah no uh Alexia Nicole um I've actually worked with her a couple of times and she's a, she's a firecracker. She also has um, a shoulder injury. I don't know too much about it. I just know mm-hmm. that it's been um, it's been repaired a couple times. Um, and I she's she's a firecracker, man. She's she's super rad. She's awesome. Yeah, I've been trying to get her on the podcast, but it's a busy lady, busy busy lady. Um, finally, Persephone Voice. Hmm. That's a hard one. I've never been asked about that. Um, probably, I guess someone that doesn't quit, doesn't give up. Perseverance. How about that? Perseverance voice. There you go. That's, uh, <laughs> right? Isn't yeah. that terrible? <laughs> I'm not sure if that's cheesy or cool. Like, I reckon if you put it on a t-shirt, it would probably do quite well, to be honest. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. people get my name wrong all the time. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably, from my small amount of time having the distinct pleasure of chatting to you, I'd say relentless, which is very crucial. I think in this business, if you oh. want, you know, it's very difficult. You can't take no for an answer in wrestling. Otherwise, you, you know, mentally, it might get in your head. And it's very cool to see. Um, 
like I say, we'll provide links to the documentaries and things of that nature. But that clip, seeing you um, before you had the opportunity to make your comeback uh, match was very powerful and very cool and very emotional because I know what it's like when you've been to the, you know, I've been to very dark places and been lucky enough to pull myself all the way back through that. And I know what it's like when you kind of get to almost rehabilitate yourself and then, you know, touch surface with what you love prominently so yeah um yeah real talk it's been a fucking good crack i've really enjoyed it i yes. absolutely Thank love you. and adore you as a person i think you've got an amazing career hopefully you've still got many many years and the shoulder will oh, look after thank you. you thank you so much and well, i really do hope we get to do this again this was super fun i got am time. obsessed with podcasts it's yeah. so fun for me well I love the fact that the podcast is for you guys, for the talent. And um, I also just love the fact that I get the opportunity to meet so many amazing people. And you're definitely up there as one of the coolest people I've met. And uh, we love your cat as well. Your cat is now a star in the podcast as well. Um, I'm sure uh, your cat and uh, my dog, if he, yeah, he's, he's sulking again. Never mind. <laughs> he's still there looking. He does. They could be their own tag team into gender. There you go. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, thank you so much for your time. Uh, like I say, for everyone who wants to follow Persephone Vice, please do so. Check out the descriptions of the podcast. Please check out merch as well. We'll provide links to that. Um, I know you mentioned your modeling shoots without trying to sound too cretinous. They are scintillating would be a good word to use i think um so yeah check those out as well because who doesn't want a signed photo of a absolute bombshell on their wall um but most importantly thank you for providing your knowledge your eloquence and obviously continue to be the amazing human being you are oh well it's been a pleasure and thank you so much for having me on here and i look forward to part two yeah, part two, which will be coming very, very soon if we if we have our way. But yeah, uh, if we have our way. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm humbled by your time, and I look forward to speaking to you soon, Persephone. Take care.